Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello everyone and welcome to the Fantasy Edge presented by FantasySixPack.net. My name is Jonathan Chen and surely I will be joined by uh, Richard Seville. Uh, Kevin is off uh, this week, he's fully under the weather, so we wish him uh, the best and a speedy recovery. But uh, let's get on to the, I guess, playoff uh, preview, the week 14 preview of the Fantasy Edge. Uh, Richard, how's it going? Not too bad. You beat me this week. I did. It's awful. That was, uh, it's all on the uh, on the Monday nighter, the the 49ers and Bills. I needed Brandon Ayuk uh, to go off, and uh, he had a good game. Yeah, and I started the San Francisco defense, <laughs> which was bad. And the the Bills, the Bills just rolled over them, no problem. They, they could get no pressure on him at all, zero, none. The uh, one and only time in my life I will cheer for the Bills. They're really, that was it. They're really missing Bosa. They're really missing both. The Niners' defense is missing a lot of pieces. Uh, and, well, they've been getting. Defense. I figured they'd be getting some guys back. You know, they got uh, Sherman back, and they got a few other guys back. You know that. Uh, you know, Bosa is not just the only good player on that team. So, but uh, they didn't do it. Eh, there were some other well, flubs too that I left. I thought you had me when McLaurin put up like two points, but it worked out for the best. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to be second seed and get get a buy. It looks like yeah, um, because Ezekiel Elliott is not going to help my opponent defeat uh, the other guy. So, uh, so I'll be so I'll probably get a bye week. It didn't matter a bye week or not, as long as I'm in. a really kind of happy when you have a bye week. You, you know, if you have a good week, it really really irks you because you you know you, you feel bad because you you guys are all sitting on the bench like doing nothing and you get through. But, you know, it's better not to have any chances. That's one chance of losing out of the way, I guess. You can look at it that way. But, um, yeah, yeah, interesting our league. Um, uh, I don't know if anybody else does this in their fantasy league, but I, I put this in on Twitter. Is that, do you do any of you out there uh, work out your playoff scenarios <laughs> From, uh, like, look at who, like, to see who you're going to match up with or see who others are going to match up or see if guys, your tough opponents are going to be knocked out of the playoffs so you want them out <laughs> and stuff like that. So, you, you know, so you have something to hope for. I don't know if you do that, John, do you? No, personally, I don't look for, I don't draw up the playoff scenarios. I just look to see uh, my own seeding. Like, if I can move up, if I can move down, my, can I get a bye? Uh, will I make the playoffs? That kind of thing. Other people, I could really care less about who I face. It's all—it's all about my team and how they're going to perform, anyways. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter. So, yep, that's all I pay attention to. Uh, that's all my thoughts. Oh, by the way, the uh, it's halftime. Uh, Ravens and Cowboys, and uh, the Ravens have the lead. And CeeDee Lamb just narrowly missed catching a hail mary from Andy Dalton. It was quite spectacular. Well, nice segue into a first piece of news, not on the list, but somewhat breaking as of about an hour and ten minutes ago. Ooh, what Des is it? Des Bryant tested positive uh, for COVID. Oh yeah, and he has apparently quit the season. Um, uh, he. We'll sit out the rest of the season. It's been a tough year for him. Uh, finally coming back. Then, you know, Ravens game keeps getting pushed. Now he finally gets a chance to play against the Cowboys again. And uh, he so he, wanted to. I wanted to see it too. I wanted to see that. And yeah, uh, he was pulled off the field during warm ups uh, um, for a. I guess he must have been in contact with somebody, but tested positive and now Dez is gone. Of course, it doesn't have any fantasy relevance, but just some news that, uh, yeah, just just for Kevin. I know Kevin would be, Ke- Kevin is devastated by this, so. I am yeah, too. Yeah, Dez Bryant I am too. retired. <laughs> retired for the year anyways. Oh, that's even worse. That's even uh, worse. All right, moving on. Uh, AJ Boye uh, is facing a suspension for PEDs, much like the pair of Texans players, uh, Bradley Roby and Will Fuller from a couple of weeks ago. Um, well, he's a former Texan too, isn't he? Uh, Jaguar. Okay. Used to play for Jaguars. Either Uh, way. um, Jaguars had, Jaguars had Boye and Ramsey at the same time in one season. Can you imagine that? The, The year they made the AFC championship, right? Yeah. They were excellent. Yeah. And who did they lose to in the AFC championship? Oh, right. It was the Patriots. That's the one. Yeah. Beat Pittsburgh, um, Yeah, they beat Pittsburgh. That was great. Too funny. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, 
it doesn't really have much of an effect on on fantasy. The no, you, nobody is really starting the Broncos defense, anyways. Uh, at this point in their careers, or at this point in the season, you're not going to risk the Broncos defense. So no, but it, but it, it, it he's a he's one of these cover receivers and uh, one of these cover cornerbacks. So if you're playing the Broncos, it kind of gives your uh, wide receiver a, a bit of a of upside without Boye in. Yeah, who are the next three matchups? They got Carolina, Buffalo, and the Chargers. So, I mean, if you have this, the number ones, I guess Robbie Anderson would be yeah. the guy now. He gets an uptick. Diggs gets an uptick. And Keenan Allen, I don't think he needs an uptick. Keenan Allen is just Keenan Allen at this point. Yeah. I don't think it would um, be. I think he'd be on Mike Williams probably. I don't think Boye would have been shadowing Williams, would he? He probably. Uh, I don't think Boye shadows in general, but he would have been on Allen a little bit more often. Yeah, I thought he. I I kind of tend to think that Boye is a bit of a shadow a shadow corner, but uh, and, maybe and not. Boye he, did he play might, for the Texans. Uh, I'm on his page right now. Uh, these days they move him around, don't they? All right, so. Uh, receivers against the Broncos get it get an uptick for the uh, for the rest of the season here. Again, that's the Panthers, the Bills, and the Chargers receivers. Uh, moving on, I guess the biggest news from Sunday: uh, Carson Wentz was benched for more real really bad performance. Just he's been poor all season, and now he's finally got benched. Jalen Hurts came in uh, in the second half, and I mean he didn't play badly considering the Eagles line isn't great he completed five of 12 passes 109 yards a touchdown uh, and an interception five rushing attempts with 29 yards um I mean the stats aren't great the completion percentage wasn't great but the Eagles offense did look better with with Hertz there I guess they had that a spark I guess you can say um are you giving the well the Eagles offense first of all runs through Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz but are you giving much of an uptick to the receivers like Rager or even Travis Fulgham, who's been a complete zero over the last four weeks? Actually, this is a very bad time in fantasy for this to happen because it doesn't give us enough time to see who Hertz really connects with. And like, we really just don't know uh, who Hertz is going to make a connection with. I'm assuming it will be Rager, and I, I, I mean, I'd like to think it was Rager, but apparent, but his first uh, look seemed to be to Ward of all people. So I, but he, there's really not enough data in to to really say. And now we're at the playoff uh, portion of fantasy. I mean, if this if this happened like just maybe three or four weeks ago, we might have a little bit more uh, of a look. But but now that they benched Wentz at this point. It, it you kind of have to sort of make an educated guess uh a more well it's always an educated guess but i mean more of an educated guess than you usually do so that's 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 my feeling on it as for hertz as a as a streamer uh same thing yeah i mean it's tough to to kind of gauge of course this late in the season um but again if hertz does have a little bit more rushing upside than wentz does so if you need you know, a dart throw, a high upside QB2, whatever, then I think Hurts, not a bad play, um, but a risk, it's it's a risky one. Yeah. But I do think that Goddard uh, is safe. Goddard's uh, yeah, Goddard an, is easy, safe. An, e- an easy tight end start at this point. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of like, from what I saw, like Ward and Rager, I think are the guys. Um, I think you can forget Alshon Jeffrey and uh, who are the other ones? Hightower, you know the rest of the, you know. Uh, I mean, Hightower was never was never relevant. Yeah, it's, but it I, was yeah, Fulgham and Alshon Jeffrey Fulgham. and Greg Ward, Jalen Rager. But I think a white side if he ever decides to come back. Yeah, but my my front runners are Ward and Rager. Yeah, I mean Rager's been incredibly disappointing considering that uh once again the eagles could have passed uh, passed up on several receivers that are performing better just like they did with our sega whiteside last year uh they decided to go with you know a little a little off the board at their receiver pick and uh guys behind him like t higgins and justin jefferson are performing much much better early in their careers mm. it's not great anyways moving on to the next piece uh a healthy news now uh james connor is going to, is ready to be activated off the COVID reserve list, uh, and will provide a definite boost to the Steelers' offense that averaged 1.5 yards a carry against the Washington Football Team in their first loss. Yeah. Um, O'Connor obviously coming back; he's right back in the starting lineups. But there were some issues with uh, the number of carries he was getting and his efficiency uh, at first, uh, or 
just before he went on the COVID list. Is Connor gonna going to go back to I guess the efficient, you know, touchdown scoring player he was early in the season, or are we gonna see more of the eight to thirteen carries he was getting, or nine to thirteen carries he was getting the last three uh, the last three games he played? Well, uh, the commentators were saying during the uh, during the game, I think it was the, uh, Kevin Burkhart and. Uh, uh, Johnson, uh, the, those two commentators in the game, that, that the Steelers really need to get their running game going because they're a passing offense. I mean, it's kind of obvious why they're a passing offense. Look at the, they've got a wealth of great receiving talent on the team. Like, they're overloaded. I mean, even James Washington would be, you know, he, he would be a WR2 on some other needy team, you know. And, uh, so they're, so they're a bit too pass dependent right now. And, uh, they really need to get some, uh, ground game going. And that's what really hurt them. I think that was the difference in the Washington game. And, uh, they're, they've also got a bad problem with drops as well. So I think that's another reason to get that running game going as well. So that, because that, that's going to happen. The more, the more you pass, the more drops you get. I mean, Ebron's, Ebron's the worst of them. And I would say that, uh, Deontay Johnson's, I think it's funny that Juju Smith Schuster seems to be the most efficient catch, a pass catcher that they have. But, um, he's not, uh, I don't know. Um, he's not easy to throw to for, uh, he doesn't get open as well as the other, as, as Claypool and, uh, and Johnson. So, uh, um, so th- yeah, so I, they really got to get James Conner going. Um, as for your fantasy playoffs, I think you really got to start them, but, uh, but I mean, look, let's face it, like, um, Benny Snell stinks. He's just, he's just awful. He's just, he can't do anything. And McFarlane, uh, I don't, I don't see him going anywhere. They even tried to get Samuel in there, so. Anyways, my 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 take on James Conner is that you kind of welcome him back in fantasy with open arms and playoffs because the uh, the Steelers are definitely going to want to get uh, now. This is going to hurt the receivers with uh, with extra ground running, but uh, I think it has to be done because I, I think um, this 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 loss to the uh, to the Washington football team was a kind of a wake up call to the team, and I think Tomlin's going to be looking very 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 closely at the situation. Yep, and now Big Ben can't pad his stats against weak against weak secondaries anymore. <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, Corey Davis had what I assume is the best game of his career: uh, eleven receptions, hundred and eighty-two yards, and a touchdown in a uh, shootout loss to the Browns. Um, He's been wide receiver 14 over the past five weeks. Uh, this is, of course, after everybody uh, decided to throw him to the wayside and ignore him completely to start the year. Is is Corey Davis, I guess, can, can you consistently trust him now? I guess, of course, with his performance this year, you have to. But there's always a part of me that does not want to trust Corey Davis. Uh, has he moved into that wide receiver two conversation for you, Richard? You know, I, I'm kind of with you on this. Is that uh, With Corey Davis, he's just not the guy that you really wanted to... Uh, uh... He was always on the draft board, but he's never a target because of uh, the past. But now, um, his strength actually comes from the fact that A.J. Brown is on the other side. And A.J. Brown uh, draws uh, the coverage, and Corey Davis is is making money out of it. And uh, and that's great uh, for anybody... Uh, for anybody uh, uh, owning Corey Davis, and and it showed up this week, and that's the first time I've seen Corey Davis at the top of of the fantasy list of of fantasy receivers, and uh, I think it's fantastic. I'm very happy for him, and I've changed my mind about him only because only because he's not the number one. He's not the he's not the quote unquote uh, the uh, the number one the guy the guy. He's not the guy, but he is the you know he's he's definitely a solid. Uh, Solid second, and uh, in a losing effort, in a bad game that the Titans had, uh, you know, he did put up good numbers, and kind of uh, kudos to uh, Corey Davis, and actually kudos to Mike Vrabel, too, for uh, getting him worked in. I'm kind of impressed with the coaching uh, that they've they've managed to uh, fix him up. I didn't think it was possible, but they've done it. For sure, Corey Davis looks good. Now, the Titans' upcoming schedule also looks good. They got... The Jaguars, the Lions, the Packers, and the Texans. So four uh, very exploitable defenses uh, through the air. However, those defenses are also very, very exploitable on the ground. And it's almost a coin flip at this point whether or not uh, Derrick Henry is going to run for 200 yards, uh, especially against Jacksonville and Houston, which he always does late in the season. Yes. Um, 
or you know, Ryan Tannehill is gonna gonna beat them through the air because they're selling out to stop Derrick Henry. So mm. yes, good matchups coming up for Corey Davis, but could also very very much work out uh, that he doesn't need to work because Derrick Henry's gonna carry the ball twenty five times. Well, Derrick Henry's got to make a statement, doesn't he? And of course, this is like I say, if you're on a bye week, I'm gonna watch Derrick Henry score all these, get these massive fantasy day. And uh, oh, against Jacksonville, yeah, he's gonna stiff arm eight people on his way to another ninety nine yard touchdown. He does it every year against the Jags. He does it, but oh. Hopefully, well, there's a, there's another one coming, but uh, this is the problem with a bye week. You don't get to... You don't get, so if you're on a bye week and you have Derrick Henry, well, you're just going to have to wait and just just watch and uh, and be happy that he's... Just hope that he doesn't get hurt. That's the only thing you want. And by All the right, way... moving on. Oh, one more Sorry? thing, too. Uh, by the way, um, you should uh, you should handcuff him, maybe, if you're... If you're so inclined, I mean, he's pretty solid, but uh, just handcuff him just in case. Um, to... I mean, nobody's going to start Jeremy McNichols, right? No, but... Uh... <laughs> if Derrick Henry gets hurt, you're not starting Jeremy McNichols. No, like, but Darrington Evans, no is, Darrington Evans is due to come off IR and probably Don to Foreman. There'll probably be some sort of committee there, but... No, um... I, I wouldn't bother. Like, you, there's not a single handcuff that you can trust, and I definitely wouldn't start any of those guys. There's, it's not, It's not worth it. You don't know what they're gonna work, how they're gonna work any of those three guys in. Who's gonna get the most carries? Whether they're even good, it's not not worth it in the fantasy playoffs. No, I think so, but I I, I tend to disagree. I think uh, it's best to have somebody. So. I mean, look at a guy like Devonte Booker. He was the clear cut handcuff for Josh Jacobs in a cake matchup against the Jets, and he completely busted. Mm. If you have a clear cut uh, handcuff that didn't do anything against the worst team in the league, That's you can't true. trust. You can't trust three guys in a in a committee as backups. No, it it's very it's way too risky. Oh, no argument there, but I mean, uh, but it's best to not take any chance. I mean, well, I mean, if you haven't got anybody else, I mean, if your waiver wire is thin, like it is usually at the end of the year. Um, but I don't know. I I don't want to. But uh, no one wants to see anybody getting hurt. Who is a WR one, which is another segue, I guess, isn't it? Yep. Speaking of getting hurt, uh, AJ Green out for the year and is going to likely move on from the Bengals uh, this season. Um, another, another, I guess, just talking about Corey Davis, another guy who is out of the circle of trust, um, depending on where he signs, is Green due for a bounce back? Because he did not look good for most of this year uh, with Joe Burrow at the helm of the of Cincinnati. Um, is he done? Is, he, think, is this going to be a Des Bryant situation? I think the sands of time are, are putting him into uh, Emmanuel Sanders' territory now. He's just going to, he'll move on to another team and be, uh, you know, the third wide or something. I think, I, I think his, I think his time is, uh, I think his time is done. I mean, he didn't, he didn't show any connection whatsoever when Burrow was in. And I, I, I really think, uh, it's, it's the T. Higgins show. We all knew that. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't see where you're drafting green, uh, in 2021, uh, I really think he's gonna. I, I think he's still be on the draft board, but as a, it'll be very, you know, a late pickup. The, of course, depending on which team is picks him up. Like if he goes to maybe if he goes to the Giants or something. I don't know. I mean, there might be some something there. I don't know, but it, it, we just have to see where Green ends up. But even where he ends up, I just don't. I, I kind of see him in the in the twilight years now. Yeah, definitely. It's not. Uh, that's that's a wait and see situation for fantasy. Hate to say it, because he was uh, great at one time. You know. He was, but injuries catch up to everybody. At, injuries and age catch up to everybody at some point. They so. sure do. Yeah. Speaking of injuries, Antonio Gibson left uh, Monday's game against the Steelers after two carries uh, with a toe injury. Uh, was doubtful to return and then ruled out uh, pretty early, pretty soon after getting injured. And Ron Rivera provided no injury update on Gibson uh, on Tuesday, so he's probably going to go into the uh, into the weekend next game as questionable. Now, if you're a Gibson owner and he does play, how much risk is there in in starting him with toe injuries, which are notorious for sticking around? Oh, bad! And and this is bad. I own Gibson and uh, Scott Fishball, and I am just I am just crossing my fingers and toe. That he uh, can play next week. It 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 is really a heavy blow because now uh, I, I will say this. Um, you know, we we're talking about handcuffs. 
and you, you're probably talking about this guy too. And I, I won't mention him until we get to waivers. But uh, we're talking about handcuffs for the for the Washington. There are guys to pick up definitely that um, showed up, and we actually got because because Gibson was hurt early enough in the game, so we got the you know we got we got a bit of an acetate of the of the situation. So uh, yeah, you're you're monitoring Gibson, and even even so. If he does return, especially with the toll, as you say, um, I'm worried about limited uh, usage as well, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a, a difficult situation to gauge. Uh, again, especially just look what happened to Joe Mixon. I know it's a different injury, but man, that foot injury is lingered and lingered and lingered. It looked like he was positive or probable and then... He was placed on IR, yeah. so you never know what's going to happen. Because Barber and well, I may as well mention their names because they're going to come up anyway. But but Barber and McK- this is the problem. Barber and McKissick look great, right? I mean, they handled the. I mean, McKissick did between the twenties, and Barber just you know plows in for the scores, you know. So either one is you know are viable pickups. Uh, so but we'll go into that a little more detail a little later on, I guess, right? Yep. All right. Well, that's it for the news, unless I missed something. But um, Richard, let's start with our observations. What did you uh, What did you learn this week? What did I learn this week? Uh, did I put anything in there? Uh, I didn't put anything in there. Uh, why don't you go first, and I'll uh, think up something. All right. I, I um, had something ready. But I guess I this this week my observation is that the Arizona offense is uh, grinding to a halt. Whether or not this has to do with Kyler Murray's shoulder injury or the NFL just figuring out Cliff Kingsbury's, uh, I guess, strategies, uh, their offense has fallen off a cliff over the last three games. Um the Patriots, the Rams, and the Seahawks seem to have figured them out. They've limited uh, Kyler on the ground. Uh, he's thrown for under 200 yards the past two games. And uh, Keith brought something up in our group chat today, a uh, tweet showing DeAndre Hopkins' route tree over the last three games. Uh, it's extremely limited, sticks to one side, uh, very shallow routes. And I don't know, it's just the Cardinals, or Kingsbury, hasn't adjusted. Um, they run, you know, the same group at the same base of plays they haven't really deviated and they haven't been able to adjust to any i guess decrease pr- proficiency in kyler's form due to the injury and he doesn't really look great throwing the ball either right now he's doing this weird looping motion thing that's really odd and he wasn't doing earlier in the season so i think that ac joint sprain is uh, significantly affecting him mm. and yeah they just they've kind of stalled um the run game with Drake and Edmonds. Uh, Drake's been much, much better as the season's gone on, but they still struggle to be efficient because all the run game, all the run plays uh, just run straight up the gut as a way to take pressure off Kyler. And it's kind of, they're stuck. They're going to have to do something drastic over the next few weeks if they want a chance at the playoffs. Mm. Did you see, uh, I think Keith put up a a next gen uh, graphic about uh, the route running of DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned that. It's just yeah, very. Uh, the, he I, switch I was wondering if that's where you got that from. I think that's where you got that from. Yeah, because we saw that graphic. Uh, so I was wondering if that's where you're because you're because it sounded exactly like the like what you were mentioning there. So mm-hmm. yeah, that next gen stat. Yeah, it's a great graphic. Uh, if you can uh, find it on uh, just uh, search DeAndre Hopkins, uh, you can see that graphic on Twitter. Uh, yeah, so you're exactly right about this. Uh, <clears throat> That um, Kyler Murray's definitely not uh, rolling out nothing to the nothing to the right side. Everything all passing to you know the left is all. So there is there is something going on. I think that's a that is a good observation. Um, <coughs> I guess uh, my observation would probably be uh, um, that the actually the other team that's stalling is the Seahawks. They had a terrible game against the Giants. Um, Russell Wilson couldn't get it going. He was. He was getting stuffed. He was uh, the the running game wasn't wasn't working. Um, uh, Russ uh, Russ couldn't cook. Um, there was just no uh, there was no action. It was a low scoring game. I think now you could be saying I could it could be a thing that the the Seahawks look past the Giants a little bit, which is not hard to do because the Giants you know they've got Colt McCoy as quarterback and uh, hey, hey hey that's the NFC East leading Giants to that's, you that's <laughs> come on you're no Giants fan I know no I'm not but the Giants defense is legit they they're, are legit their defense their their defense is legit they shut them down they did they shut them down and uh they, they uh it was just uh not only just shut them down they they uh packaged them up and put a bow on it that's 
You know, there was just there was just nothing happening for Russell Wilson. I mean, he, and usually Russell can rally, but he couldn't even mount a rally. Uh, it's just you know, you know, you know how Russell Wilson does those late game rallies that he always does, right? Not this time. No. Nope. So I. I'm kind of a little bit concerned about the Seahawks, like looking past opponents. But uh, uh, who they got next? You know? Um. Yeah, they got the Jets. Oh, they got the Jets next. Bye. <laughs> I mean, uh, in, no, the I, Raiders I, almost <laughs> lost. If Greg Williams didn't tank them, then they would have won. <laughs> Uh, uh, I think a big problem for the Seahawks right now is the health of Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde. They haven't been able to establish the run as they like to. Yeah. And the passing game is, again, getting a little stale because they can't establish that run. Yes. Yeah, it is, uh, yeah similar, similar situation to the Cardinals, except for the fact that Kyler Murray is definitely uh, showing signs of wear. Yeah, he's, he's playing hurt. There's no doubt about it. But uh, this was just plain bad performance and so on. But that, that's my observation. Two offenses that uh, were that looked good early in the season, earlier in the season, are now looking a little bit like you say stale. Yep. Uh, well, instead of uh, stagnant offenses, let's talk about moving on up. Um, yeah. Let me go first since you just went. Uh, we already alluded to the Washington football team, but we have a couple of guys here. Uh, go with one of the running backs, J.D. McKissick. Um, again, with even with Antonio Gibson healthy, McKissick was getting a solid dose of targets. Uh, this week he had 10 of them. Um, he's just Alex Smith's go-to guy, as you said, between the 20s. Uh, his first, almost, it almost seems like he's his, his first look uh, when he drops back to pass. Yeah. Uh, again, he had he caught all 10 of his targets for 70 yards. I mean, he only had 8 yards on the ground on 5 carries, but that's not what you're looking for out of McKissick. Uh, if you're in a PPR league and Gibson doesn't play, then McKissick could once again see close to 10 targets, and you're looking at a great floor from, uh, from a flex or a desperation uh, RB2 there. And he looks good too. He's a good. He's a good football player. I mean, he 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 used to play for the Seahawks, and he was uh, he was decent there. And I think he got hurt. You always get hurt if you're a Seahawks running back. But uh, but no, McKissick. Uh, you know, he's a solid uh, uh, pass catching back. He's he's really good. Uh, you know, um, he's a good. You know, he he slides right into that Gibson role perfectly. So yeah, he is moving on up. Um, of course, pending Gibson's health, uh, that's the that's the key there, as you say. Yep. And who do you got moving on? Uh, it's got to be Logan Thomas. Uh, again, I didn't start him in our league against in our, and I don't know why I didn't trust him. Well, I know why I didn't trust him because I picked up Noah Fant, who you dropped. <laughs> Left and I got, a bomb and, and, and you yeah, yeah, lineup. you did, you did, you did, and well, I thought it was a good matchup against the Patriots. Um, uh, not is Patriots, the Chiefs? Pardon me, the Chiefs, and uh, and uh, I thought, well, this will this will be good, and then and I thought Logan Thomas, well, you know, Steelers defense, you know, you know, it'd be a slog, and but uh, I don't know, he's throwing pa- well, he was a quarterback, wasn't he? He, he, he did he did some quarter, he kind of did a. Uh, he did one of those things that uh, that the remember that receiver from the Browns. He's kind of uh, changed his position into a tight end, and he's a good tight end. Suddenly, Logan Thomas is uh, moving on up, um, and uh, and he's he is um, Alex Smith's uh, comfort zone guy. You know, he's the uh, and and you can tell you can tell Alex Smith. Logan Thomas is his. Uh, receiver of comfort like uh like he used to before like when uh, jordan reed was on the team alex smith would try to find him so um alex smith when uh you have a guy like logan thomas uh yeah it's uh i own him but i didn't start him so i lost and that's the end of it <laughs> but he's moving on up it you've got to have him and uh um he's he's definitely he'll definitely be flying off uh waivers this week i'm sure if he's unknown Indeed. still uh, let me check his ownership percentage just so our listeners know. He's 40% rostered, so uh, widely available uh, for the most part. And if he's available, yeah, definitely definitely an ad there. Yeah. Two straight games to the touchdown. Yeah, he's definitely he's, he's creeping up into that TE1 conversation, and there's not many like that around, I can tell you. Yep. All right, let's move on to the panic. We both wrote the same guy here, so... So, well, let's uh, do it. <laughs> this, this won't be a very long uh, panic section. It's pretty easy, too. Uh, Miles Sanders, even with Jalen Hurts coming in, 
Uh, Doug Peterson just doesn't seem to want to use Sanders as a as a lead guy the last nope. couple of weeks. No. Nope. Um, over his last two weeks combined, he has 16 carries for 46 yards. Uh, at some point, there were multiple series at a time uh, this past week where it was uh, Boston Scott uh, in there instead of Sanders. And it's just very, very odd to see somebody that's so obviously your best running back just not playing like multiple series at a time. And yeah, it's just odd. Until he starts getting used properly, you can't really trust him. Well, and Scott looks more, um, Scott looks like a little bit more, um, more of the guy with burst in that offense too. So, uh, Sanders looks like, and he drops passes. Oh, not, not saying that, uh, well, to be fair, Carson Wentz hasn't been throwing the ball very well. He's not throwing uh, the ball, you know, he's not getting, he's making the ball hard to catch, for one thing. So he's not, uh, Carson Wentz hasn't been perfectly on target, but still, when he is on target, uh, uh, Miles Sanders is not catching the ball. He's not the guy who uh, we drafted. I don't know if I can think of any other buddy, uh, anybody else to that's that's uh that i'm panicking on but i'm sure there are others but uh, but no, I, I think guess, sanders is a pretty universal panic this week I yeah think it's safe to go with him. yeah you're if you're going into the playoff with miles sanders you're really in trouble and uh, the addition of jordan howard there hasn't helped his touches either no and jordan howard is a former eagle as well and uh he knows the system so it could be working him in quite quickly too into that offense. They got to get something going because the uh, division title, for what it's worth in the NFC East, is slipping away. Yeah, I think that belongs to the Giants now. I think it's uh, looking that way. Although I will give Washington a chance. Yeah, coming off a big win. Big win, massive. All right, let's move on to the uh, the, the, the the favorite segment here. Ah, the favorite segment. That means I got to do the tune. Here it is. You got to do the thing. Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. Yeah, you gotta be unlimited. Yeah, Mr. Unlimited. Well, this week we have a pair of uh, pair of Raiders after their comeback win against the uh, the mighty Jets. Uh, I'm gonna nominate Darren Waller, the tight end. Uh, I don't see how we can give this to anybody else. He had the fourth highest uh, PPR performance by a tight end ever. <laughs> 45 PPR points, 38 and a half, half PPR points, uh, 13 receptions, 200 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. He was the only the sixth tight end ever to have 200 receiving yards. Um, he was the only weapon for the Raiders uh, all day, except for Ruggs on that last touchdown. But that's, again, Greg Williams tanking the game. Who plays cover zero on an obvious Hail Mary situation? Whatever, I'm not getting into it. Um, Darren Waller. That's my Mr. Limited number. Yeah, did did Greg Williams get fired or something? He got fired the next morning. (laughs) Like, literally, I'm pretty sure he got fired for just how awful that one play call was. Yeah, just off. And, you know, so so degrading for the Jets and just, that was bad. Well, my guy is going to be obviously Derek Carr, who went from the sewer to the summit. I mean, he got like um, 6.6 fantasy points in week 12, and he goes all the way to the top of the quarterbacks and win. You know, I almost selected Corey Davis, but I forgot he lost. So, but you can't, <laughs> we can't have a guy who lost. I almost, I almost put him in by mistake. And, not allowed uh, to have losers in the section. No, I'm not allowed to have losers in the section, but, uh, yeah. Uh, but Derek Carr has to, uh, you got to weigh him in because of, um, we gave him up for dead in fantasy, but, um, you know what? Uh, because you, I was going to put in Darren Waller, but you put in him, hit him, him in first. And so I'm going to have to go with, uh, Darren Waller uh, over Derek. Yeah, I think, I think it, this has to be Waller. I think. Because, yeah, because I was thinking, well, even before, uh, when I was thinking about it today, I was thinking, no, I'll put in Derek, but I saw you put him in. So I thought, well, well I got to put somebody up against him and why not Derek Carr? I mean, Derek Carr is a, a worthy nomination, I feel. Definitely a worthy nomination for Mr. Unlimited, but no, nah, we'll give it to we'll give it to Darren Waller. Great bounce back uh, from a from a lousy game in Week Twelve, as all the Raiders did. So yeah, let's give it to him. Here he is, Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. You gotta be, and he is. All right, Darren Waller, Miss uh, Week 13's Mr. Unlimited. Uh, let's move on to the waiver wire. Uh, a very thin waiver wire this week uh, outside of wide receivers. Um, and we already There's only two other running backs that are even worth discussing this week. Uh, first one is also from that Raiders-Jets game is Ty Johnson. After Frank Gore got hurt on his first carry, he got a concussion, uh, immediately ruled out, and is now questionable for uh, Week 14. 
Ty Johnson came in and performed extremely well, had over 100 yards and a touchdown on the ground. If he plays again, um, then he's in, I wouldn't say automatic start, but he is going to be the starter for the Jets. And hopefully he doesn't get scripted out of the game against Seattle because that offense could potentially pick things back, pick things up again against the Jets. And Johnson could get scripted out. I don't think the Jets have another option. Um, and just in terms of a receiving back, that would be that guy. So Johnson probably would remain in the game. Mm. But uh, unless Josh Adams is a big receiving guy, I don't think he is. I have two but. words to say about Ty Johnson. Two words. Adam Gase. <laughs> I mean, he had 22 carries. If Gase is willing to give him 22 carries again, sure. Yeah, but will he? <laughs> that is I the mean, question. I don't know. I really, when it comes to Adam Gase, you just don't know. I mean, you, you really don't. don't. But you got to follow the volume, right? For a backfield as ugly looking as this one now with Ty Johnson and Josh Adams as the guys. Yeah, but we're in playoffs, though. Playoffs, are you going to start? Are you really going to put Ty Johnson in the flex? Are you really going to do that? I mean, I mean, if you have Josh Jacobs and or Antonio Gibson or both, and now well, and they're and they're both out, mm. then what else are you gonna do? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Um, I mean, if you got nobody else and you're yeah, if you had Josh Jacobs struggling. or again, like even Wolf Fuller, and you haven't been able to replace Fuller properly, then so, so. you gotta start someone. Why not start uh, the guy that had 22 carries last week? Speaking of Fuller. Kiki! Kiki's back on the map! Yes, he is. Kiki QT. Uh, un- unbelievable. He's back. And he looked great! And he had a good... He scored good points for you. He was he was a pickup last week already, actually. It, how, mu- how much is... How many people did, uh, like, dove in? Like, I mean... He was 27% rostered uh, as of Sunday afternoon when the game started. Wow. And now, so I guess, so, yeah, is he available in our league? I don't think so. I think somebody No, I doubt it. Out. I doubt it, too. Our league is tough. Everybody's on the ball. That's the problem. <laughs> but, uh, there should be somebody to pick up, maybe. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Like you said, QT played well. He had eight, uh, eight receptions, 141 yards, was the... Uh, obvious number two receiver uh, after Brandon Cooks uh, did keep in mind he did do a lot of damage when Cooks went to the uh, the medical tent and the locker room after a concussion evaluation. So don't expect uh, 141 yards every week from him. But he is the wide receiver two, and he does have a a good relationship, a good rapport with uh, Deshaun Watson. Good enough to definitely good enough to pick up and start in PPR leagues. Yeah, he's uh, a really, really good pickup. Um, he's available. Gotta get him. Gotta get him. He's he's likely he's um, the smart the smart people picked him up last week, of course, because of uh, Will Fuller being out. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, uh, yeah, the other guys. Uh, you know, we've seen other. Um, like, I mean, he where was Kuti? Kuti was was uh, buried uh, beneath uh, Stills and Cobb, right? Mm-hmm. And so he, so yeah, he's the cream right rises to the top once again nice who else are we going with Jono? um i'll move on to a tight end i'll go with cole Komet. not because i think he's gonna blow up or anything in in the last few games of his rookie year but because he looks to have overtaken uh jimmy graham as the top uh tight end target in chicago mm-hmm. over the last two weeks he's out targeted graham 10 to 5 he had seven targets uh this past sunday in a loss to, I believe it was the Lions. Mm. Um, He's more of a spec, yeah. though, isn't he? Wouldn't I he mean, be more if you're looking for, if, are you spec adding a tight end for your bench? If you're looking for tight ends at this point, you're looking for somebody to start. You're not spec adding a tight end. No, to, well, to stash on your bench. No, well, this is if you're if you've been streaming tight ends all year, and that's not been an easy thing to do. Mm. I think Komet's, you know, you're seeing a guy who had seven targets, uh, five catches, thirty-seven yards, and a touchdown. And now he gets the Texans, Vikings, and Jaguars to end the season. Um, like again, if you're streaming tight ends, they're I think Komet's a decent option, if like a low floor option. But you know he's there; he's getting the targets of the last few weeks with with Miss Trubisky. So it's uh, it's I'd say it's just above a spec, like a low end ad. But again, if you're streaming tight ends, been tough. And this yeah. is a guy that got seven targets, so why not? Yeah, no, I st- I started. Uh... Well, I didn't have to start. I had a bye week in um, um, in uh, Scott Fishwell, but I set up lineup anyway just to see what I would get. Did you set up a lineup? And I know you had a buy in uh, where I want to yeah, tell I everybody. Yeah, set a lineup, how... but 
I, I've already I, I've resigned myself to a loss next week. I lost Fuller and Jacobs, so I've already resigned myself to a loss. All right. I lost two, lost two of my highest scores on my bye week, so I'm just gonna hope for the best next week. All right. All right. Well, I lost Gibson, so yeah, hopefully he plays. Hopefully they've he already plays. basically they've already basically ruled out Jacobs for next week. So he's another he's another one, isn't he? Moving on down. I, it's not really. No, when he plays, he's fine. It's just he's always he he plays banged up a lot, so mm-hmm. you never know what's gonna happen. Well, it's not just that. I mean, even when he was in there, you had uh, Booker and Richard doing stuff. You know, um, like there was always there was always that vulture uh, culture in the the vulture culture in uh, in uh, Las Vegas. So, eh. I but I will say this, like Jacobs, like we started off the season with a bang, and then I don't know, he just gradually got less and less involved. I don't know what it is about uh, coach. Yeah, the Raiders are in the playoff hunt. You can't be too mad, but yeah. sometimes, yeah, they do get, like Jacobs will, ru- will run down the field, get to the one, and then Booker will come in and take the touchdown or something, or it'll go to Waller. Mm-hmm. It's frustrating as a Jacobs owner to see, but if it if they score, they score. Like <laughs> Coaches don't care about fantasy, so can't really be mad at it. Oh, I see you got T.Y. Hilton on the waiver wired receiver list here, too. That's an he excellent under, spot. He's under 50% owned, so he qualifies. He's uh, underrated now. We were, like, uh, first, it's a weird thing. He was overrated, and then he was underrated, and now he's back where he's supposed to be. <laughs> what? I really hate T.Y. Hilton, he, but, he, you know... Um, so he's he's gone from he's gone through all that and now he's back where he's supposed to be or where we thought he should be at the beginning of the season which is you know a a, a very usable um wide receiver 2 3 area there and uh I'm glad to see you got him on the list but I mean he has to be I mean um at first we were at first I was thinking oh, Pittman's the Pittman's the real guy now but nope looks like uh Rivers is finding Hilton and uh jeez surprise me what do you think of that like going from from uh overrated to underrated what do you think of that situation with TY Hilton John I have to I have to hear your thoughts on that yeah, so T.Y. Hilton, uh, over the last couple of weeks, he has 191 yards receiving and two touchdowns, uh, his first two of the season. Now, maybe he's finally developed that rapport with uh, Philip Rivers. Uh, it might just be the, the, uh, the, the defenses he's played. He's got, he had Tennessee and the Texans over the last couple of weeks. Um, I can't really say I didn't, uh, I haven't watched the, the Colts the past couple of weeks to know. Um, but as you mentioned, the arrow is pointing up for T.Y. Hilton. As bad as he was to start the year, if he has that connection with Rivers now, then uh, he's a must-add uh, in the approximately 50% of leagues that he's still available in. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to hear your thoughts. Where are we going next? Uh, Yeah, we can go to the QBs. Um, there aren't many waiver wire QBs um, that are going to be usable this week. Uh, Baker Mayfield had a great performance against the Titans. Uh, four touchdowns, one of the best games of his career. But next week he gets the Ravens, so it's going to be a tough, a tough go there. Um, a surprising one might actually be Sam Darnold. I know, I know, he's been really bad uh, all year. Uh, <laughs> this past week was his first twenty-point game of the season, but he gets the Seahawks, who have allowed record numbers in the passing game. So. If the Seahawks, you know, go ahead and get out to the big lead that people are expecting them to, Darnold's going to have to throw. Uh, opposing QBs are averaging 42 passes a game against the Seahawks and over 300 yards. Um, so if the volume is going to be there, if he's going to be forced to throw, uh, he could be a good, you know, super flex QB2 option. Maybe not good, but like a decent one. It's not the worst pickup you could make in this kind of situation. I would never have, I would never start him as a Q, as you, yeah, in a two quarterback league, maybe. As you say, yeah, no, no, he's not. He's. I would start him as QB one. That's no. that's that's risking it. But QB two, like he's he has, he has a good matchup. Yes, he's been bad, but he, the matchup is there. Right. Yeah, I'm okay. You got Rivers on the list too, which I think is is pretty sound. As well. Yeah, I mean he's they're they're, they're picking it up. <laughs> and and Hertz too. Okay, so Hertz is the Hertz is the guy that I, that I talked about earlier. Is that yeah? Just unfortunately, not enough data to be certain about anything. But I'm a lot more certain about Hertz than I would be of Wentz. I think. Right. And that's a great segue uh, because my drop for the week is Carson Wentz because he's not the starter anymore. Yeah. And 
I don't think that they're gonna Doug Peterson's gonna go back. Even if uh Hertz struggles this week, it wouldn't make sense for him to go back to, you know, Wentz who's been struggling even more. So Wentz is done pretty much for the year and we'll have to see where he ends up uh next year. What are you gonna do with all that money on the bench though? I mean, come on. I mean that's that's uh I signed him to a big contract now. <laughs> it's good. Uh, the, the Eagles are really in a bit of a pickle. I mean, because Wentz is, uh, you know, they they signed him on as a franchise QB, and uh, now he's not looking like a franchise QB. So I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, come come 2021, I just don't. I mean, you're dropping him now, but are, I think you can, you know, are you dropping him in Dynasty? No, you don't drop him in Dynasty. He's going to go somewhere else where he's going to get a chance to at least is you know, he? compete is he for really? his he really? Is he going to get a starter job? He'll have a chance to compete for one at least. Like we've seen that he can play well. It's just uh, the Eagles' offense in general this year has been really bad. So hopefully, in a better situation, Wentz can kind of pick up uh, what he looked like in the la- in the last couple of years. Mm. Yeah, it's just, it's a tricky situation. Uh, I, if you, it's worrying times. Obviously, if you own him, and uh, yeah, you're right. Got to be dropping him obviously because he's not going. My guy is um, my guy is Chark. Chark hasn't done anything since uh, the Houston game. Nothing's happening. Glennon's in as uh, and you, and you got this Colin Johnson guy who seems to have taken over. And you know what? Chark was never. I don't think Chark ever really was the number one guy in this offense. I mean, he's had he's had like two games over twenty fantasy points this year. And Chark, uh, I think it's the last straw. Yeah, if you own Chark, if you haven't dropped him yet, I think you know. I mean, the targets are there, but the catches are not. Uh, over the last two weeks, but you know, Glennon's in, it's just not getting any better. Um, they got Tennessee and Baltimore coming up. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry to say, but, uh, Chark, uh, yeah, Chark is not chalk anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, well, it's tough to predict which receivers in Jacksonville are going to be, uh, I guess featured, which is another good segue to our, uh, our spec ads. And mine is the other, uh, oh, the Jaguars receiver. Uh-huh. Sorry? Oh, I mentioned him already. I didn't even see him there. Sorry. Yeah, you got him. I think Kevin spoke about, about a little bit about him last week. Did he? he did. He did. Yeah. Uh, that's... But he had he had another good performance, so I'm going to I'm going to jump on it again. Uh Colin Johnson, big uh big big target. I think he's 6-6 uh for Mike Glennon who's apparently won the starting job over Gardner Minshew, not just because he's hurt. But Minshew has apparently been begging to play, and they just want to keep playing Glennon. So, cool. And he likes throwing it to Colin Johnson. Uh, over the last two weeks, he's caught eight passes for 162 yards and a touchdown. He leads the team in targets over the last two weeks. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. big, big, big body wide receivers are the in thing these days. 6'6", six, six, 215, you know, he's right up in there. You know, the guy, any guy that's, uh, you know, getting up. Getting up there. My, I got another one. <laughs> another one. Uh, Cam Sims. Here's another one. Another big guy. Six five two fourteen. And uh, for for the for the Washington, um, I think you can. Uh, I think you can stash him for your playoffs. Why not give him a shot? I'd say um, he was getting. I I, I haven't got his uh, statistics up of what he got uh, this week, but he was getting targeted. Um, yeah, Sims had decently. a Sims had a good game. He, I believe, he was second in receiving behind uh, behind Thomas. Yeah, yeah, he was second in receiving behind Thomas, and he had uh, ninety two yards on five catches, nine targets. Yeah, not a great day for uh, McLaurin. Somehow. McLaurin got lost in the shuffle there, didn't he? But, oh, they're, the Steelers are doubling him all day. Yeah, so that, that makes it tough. So when you get matchups like... That's a, that's a good matchup for guys like uh, Cam Sims and Logan Thomas, for, I guess, for that matter. But, uh, you know. Well, and they got the Seahawks coming up in two weeks. Yeah. Just in time for round two of the playoffs. That ought to be good. Ought to be good. Ought to be a good all game. All right. I think that... Uh, I think that wraps it up for us. Richard, do you have any final thoughts before we uh, before we sign off for week 14? Yeah. Um, what's going on in the uh, game? That's kind of what's on my mind at the moment. I haven't got uh, my... It's 27-17. Uh, Amari Cooper just caught a, uh, a short yardage touchdown on fourth down after Zeke got stuffed on three consecutive plays. Did he? Oh, dear. Because uh, I... <laughs> so, uh... I yeah yeah I lost I want to tell everybody that uh, in the middle of this podcast I lost my internet so um, I'm getting everything back up again 
everything's uh i had to turn everything well i didn't turn everything off but i but everything was uh not working so uh yeah so i wanted to catch up everybody yes yeah, 27 17 late in the fourth so uh yeah so that's i don't know no no final thoughts but uh well i do have one good final thought is is good luck for your fantasy playoffs everybody and uh and i hope uh it worked out for you, and if you have a bye week and you have good players that are in good matchups, that's kind of a tough break. But it's better to be better to have a safe week than a than a rough one where you you know because well, it's, sometimes it's quite a coin flip in fantasy if you're gonna make it through or not. That's my final thought, Jono. Yeah, I'll I'll echo that. Good luck to everybody. Uh, hopefully you win your first round. If you have a bye, good luck. Uh, hopefully your players, you know, you get get them rest on the bench there, so they come back ready to go for round two. Um, except my opponents. I hope all of your guys get. I uh, hope all of you guys, you know, catch a cold and they're tired and they can't play, so I can move on. That's it. Okay. But uh, everybody, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully with our uh, full roster, with all three of us: myself, Richard, and Kevin. And uh, yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you next week for a uh, first round playoff review. Good night, everybody.